the waiting room. So um, as we begin our introductions, we can allow people to get set up. But good morning. Uh, my name is Tommy Johnson. I'm with the Portland Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, welcome to today's Eaton Peabody's Growth Basics for Business. This is our monthly breakfast seminar series, which provides a forum to gain useful do-it-yourself workplace solutions and insightful, actionable tips. Now, along with Eaton Peabody, I must thank our virtual sponsor, Anania Bailey, who's allowing us to bring you this event series all season virtually. Happy New Year to you all. This is our first Growth Basics for the calendar 2022, but it's the fifth installment of this 10-part season-long series that runs from September through June. Now, today's topic, Internal Communications, a Strategy for Employee Engagement, is presented by Jonna Major from KMA Human Resources Consulting. Based on today's registration numbers, Jonna, KMA, and this topic are very important and very popular. We have over 250 people registered for today. This is our largest Growth Basics event mm -hmm. ever. Now, like all of the Chamber's virtual signature events, today's presentation is free and it will be recorded and made available for free replay on the Chamber's website and YouTube page. Keep up to date on all the Chamber's news and events. Please visit our website, portlandregion.com, check out our events page and sign up for our weekly email newsletter while you're there. Now, before we get to today's presentation, I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions for our presenter, please type them below in the Zoom chat and I will relay them to Jonna throughout the event. But at this point, I'd like to acknowledge our presenting sponsor of Growth Basics for Business, Eaton Peabody. For the past three and a half years, Eaton Peabody has been the exclusive sponsor of this series, and they continue their support this season. I'm pleased to invite Marketing Manager, Nate Levesque, to say a few words. Nate? Great. Thank you, Tommy. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Portland Chamber for doing such a great job of putting these together, uh, providing new and engaging content month after month. Um, I also want to give a special shout out to KMA for presenting today and being a reoccurring uh, speaker in the series. And of course, I want to thank everyone in our audience for joining us. For those of you that may not be familiar with Eaton Peabody, we are a full service main based law firm with nearly 50 attorneys serving main clients from offices in Augusta, Bangor, Brunswick, Ellsworth, and Portland. We assist companies of all sizes and many different industries. So whether you're an established financial institution or a small business taking the first steps, we can help with all of your legal needs. To learn more about the services that we provide and the industries that we serve, please visit our website, eatonpeabody.com, and also be sure to follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn to stay up to date on legal updates and future presentations. All right, back to you, Tommy. Nate, thank you. And as always, good to see you there and in, uh, in front of what looks like a very rocky and cold coast. So hope you're <laughs> staying warm wherever you are today. Um, well, without further ado, I'd love to introduce our presenter. And uh, today with us is Jonna Major. She's an HR consultant with KMA Human Resources Consulting. Uh, Jonna's career has included nonprofit management and human resources roles in a variety of well-known companies and industries, including healthcare, manufacturing, retail, online services. In addition, Jonna is an entrepreneur who owned her own HR consulting firm and brought her expertise in recruiting, organizational development, compensation and benefits, employee relations, and policy development to a wide range of clients to support their growth and success. Jonna graduated with honors in sociology from Bates College right here in Maine and recently moved from her home in Scarborough, Maine to Manhattan and is able to support a roster of Maine clients from the comfort of her Upper West Side apartment. We joked yesterday that she did the reverse COVID uh, uh, trans transformation. A lot of folks from the city moved up to Maine and she, she did it the other way. But um, without further ado, Jonna, take it away. Thank you so much. Um, and so I can share my screen now, right, Tommy? Correct. Yes. All right. Let's make sure we can do this here. Okay. We all set? You don't see my notes, right? <laughs> Correct. It looks great. Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate um, all the support that the chamber has provided this morning uh, as we get this uh, present presentation established. Um, so good morning and welcome. I'm just kind of in awe of how many people are here this morning and really appreciate um, everyone's interest in this topic. Employee engagement is on the minds of many employers as we continue to see record numbers of employees quit their jobs um, and leaving employers scrambling to find new employees. And as we know, there are many reasons that employees are quitting their jobs and many dimensions um, of employee engagement. But our focus today will be on internal communications as a 
key pillar in your uh, employee engagement strategy. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, why is this important? Uh, what do employees want in internal communications? What can companies do? And what is leadership's role in supporting uh, employee communications? So before we jump into some of the content, um, I'd like each of you just to take a minute um, and think about a time when you were frustrated at work. What was going on? How did it impact your motivation and engagement? Um, <clears throat> so while you're uh, thinking about that, I did want to take this opportunity to just share uh, some examples from my career. Um, in the course of my work as both an HR professional in a consulting capacity, as well as an employee, um, I've observed many common themes uh, that employees have talked with me about what frustrates them. So examples include uh, lack of clarity on a company's goals and purpose, managers who get frustrated when they hear about upper management decisions at the same time as their staff, employees who uh, get frustrated when they don't get feedback about their job goals and performance, um, staff who feel unsettled, not knowing when they're going to hear from senior leadership and then anticipate the worst when a company-wide meeting is called. Or employees are frustrated when they're asked to meet company goals, but don't understand the numbers and metrics and how they can influence them. So I'm guessing that many of you have experienced those same frustrations. And there's a common thread with this, which is that the frustrations could have been mitigated with better communication. So why is this important? Employee engagement plus employee alignment drive company performance. Employee engagement is the emotional commitment that the employee has to its company and its goals. So to support that engagement, employees want to know what is the purpose of the company? How does my work contribute to the purpose of the company? What are other people in my company working on and how am I doing in my job? So uh, employee engagement is a good indicator of employee retention. Gallup surveys have shown that of those employees who are actively disengaged, 75% are actively looking for new work. This has a big impact on your organization. It means that the employee is not focused on their own work for you. They're taking time and energy to look for new opportunities. And they're going to be open to taking that call from the recruiter um, who's trying to fill one of the company's many open positions. And as we know, there are a lot of open positions today. Um, November was yet another record-breaking month uh, with four and a half million workers quitting their jobs. So as I mentioned before, there are a lot of different reasons that our employees are leaving and a large percentage of uh, those quit numbers are in industries that have been heavily impacted by COVID, hospitality, logistics, service, healthcare. People are leaving for better pay and better schedules. Some are leaving due to burnout in their industry. Uh, some are, and you know, mostly women are leaving because managing childcare is too complicated and expensive as the pandemic lingers on. And some are leaving and uh, leaving the workforce altogether, retiring early or starting their own business. So there are a lot of factors that may be outside your control, but what you can focus on is how to retain your current workforce and be an employer of choice for employees who are looking to make a change. I also want to share um, a Gallup workplace analysis that showed that 52% of voluntarily exiting employees say that their manager or company could have done something to prevent them from leaving. And 51% say that in the three months before they left, neither their manager or any other leader spoke with them about their satisfaction or future with the company. <clears throat> so, uh, this, and this was published in November, 2021. So 
you know, when, when many people think about internal communication, they tend to think about the employee newsletter or company meetings and updates. But the Gallup analysis shows that one of your most critical internal communication tools are your managers. We've all heard the saying that people don't leave companies, they leave managers. And so you may have a great purpose-driven company, but if your managers don't develop strong relationships with their employees and communicate with them on a regular basis, you risk losing them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me take a little drink. So now we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to connect employees um, to those areas that support engagement. As I mentioned previously, one of the key areas of employee engagement is that employees want to know what is the purpose of the company. And that relates to a company's mission, vision, and values. Millennials were the first generation entering the workforce where um, the purpose of the company and work-life balance were pri prioritized as top criteria in their job se selection. But now as we enter another year of the pandemic, more and more people are placing importance on purpose. They wanna feel aligned with the company's values and they wanna feel valued by a company. So having a clearly defined mission, vision, and values are key to connecting employees to your purpose. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about each of these elements, and I'm going to use Southwest Airlines um, mission, vision, and values just to share the language of how this can be communicated. <clears throat> so the mission is the why story of the company. It's the purpose of the company and why it was founded. So Southwest's mission is to connect people to what's important in their lives through friendly, reliable, low-cost air travel. The vision of a company is what the company hopes to be in the future. It's an aspirational statement that reflects the long-term impact the company hopes to achieve in its market, industry, geography, or some other uh, factor. For Southwest, the vision is to be the world's most loved, most efficient, and most profitable airline. And I think, uh, you know, if you look at the order of those um, elements being loved and, and uh, by their customers and their employees is, is the priority for them. <clears throat> Values are the core principles and behaviors that guide the company and really are the foundation for the culture. It allows employees to know what behavior is expected and encouraged. For Southwest, they state their values in terms of a company and employee promise. And it, it summarizes their values and focus on respect, a caring attitude, learning and personal growth, as well as what Southwest is best known for, their fun-loving attitude and employees not taking themselves too seriously. So anyone who has flown Southwest knows that generally it's a very different experience than flying on United or American Airlines. Although I think flying in general today is a lot more stressful than it's ever been. But we know with Southwest, the employees generally have fun, they're funny, and they're very engaged with their customers. And when you look at their company promise and their employee promise, that behavior is encouraged. So when we look at Southwest uh, Mission Vision Statement, it's easy to find on their website. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's very easy to read. It's visually appealing. And those are important elements as well. So when we think about communicating your company purpose, there are multiple channels for communicating that. And it's important to tap all of those channels to ensure consistent messaging, but also to reinforce the company's mission and its values so that employees feel comfortable that they can re recite your elevator speech and know what behavior is expected. KMA's mission is that we offer superior HR expertise and solutions through a cohesive team of employees who value personal flexibility and the opportunity to contribute their best work. 
Um, I joined KMA in August, and I can say that we live up to this mission. Um, we have a, an incredible amount of flexibility in how and when we do our work, um, the number of hours that we want to work any given, any given week. Um, and we have the opportunity to contribute our best work by saying yes or no to different projects that, um, that the company may get. Uh, so we really do uh, walk the talk in terms of working as a team and, and living that mission. So I'm going to talk about these different elements um, and, and talk about how to uh, have that consistent message all the way through. And as you'll see, there are some external communications avenues here, and I, I just want to highlight those because they're equally as important as you start telling the story of who your company is, particularly in this landscape where you're trying to attract um, employees to your company. So we'll talk about your website and careers page. And, and again, it's important that your mission, vision, and values are prominent, that they're displayed in a visually appealing way. Your website is an important tool, not only for attracting customers, but for attracting um, prospective employees who are evaluating you as, a, as an employer. We all know that the competitive landscape to attract employees has changed dramatically in the past year with empl more employees being able to do remote work, more companies offering remote work. So now, rather than competing just with companies in your uh, geographic area, you may be competing um, nationally or globally for talent. So having a website that differentiates you is more important than ever. So it's still important to talk about benefits and perks that you offer, but having videos or visuals or other testimonials that bring your purpose and values to life could make the difference um, in whether somebody decides to apply to your company. And so I also mentioned Indeed and LinkedIn here because there's an opportunity for you to uh, mirror those same kind of um, stories and messages uh, on your pages on those job sites as well. But let's come back to our internal focus. And so your intranet um, is just as important as your website in terms of telling your story and keeping your employees connected to the company. So in the same way that you can share those stories on your website, use your intranet or SharePoint site to share stories of how your company is delivering on its mission and the impact that you're having for your customers or clients. Highlight employee stories of how um, they are going above and beyond to deliver the mission and demonstrate your values. Um, so in addition to uh, technology like an intranet um, or SharePoint site, you also, if you're still um, in a physical space, you have an opportunity to tell your story in your break rooms, uh, on your manufacturing floor, with posters, storyboards, and, and other ways um, to really get a nice uh, visual presentation uh, that supports your company purpose and values. Your HR programs are also critical in laying the foundation uh, for making that connection to your purpose. Um, the onboarding program is one of the, one of the most important um, HR programs that uh, can create that connection and, and connect people to your purpose. Um, many times I see companies spend a lot of time, effort, money to hire good people uh, but then they come in and really just consider orientation as filling out the payroll and benefits paperwork and re reviewing the handbook. Um, but the orientation period is really the critical time to create that engagement with the employee. And especially as we've shifted to employees doing remote work, um, it's even more important to have a structured orientation that has multiple opportunities to make connections with the company. So I've highlighted some of the elements that should be included in your onboarding program, um, <clears throat> uh, telling the company history and talking about its goals. And this is a great opportunity for the founder or CEO uh, to get in front of your new employees. To uh, 
talk about your products and services and who your customers are so that employees really understand um, how your, what your products are, how they're used, and what their customers value about them. Review the company organization chart. Who does what? Um, it's a good chance to give an overview of, of the different departments and what role they play in your company. And also to talk about the hierarchy or lack thereof in your company and how decisions get made. Reviewing the job description and job expectations is critical. Making sure that that employee has a strong sense of what their responsibilities are and how their performance will be measured and how you'll be talking with them about their performance. Reviewing company values and expected behaviors. Um, and then uh, this is also a critical time to establish that relationship and the communicate, communication cadence with the manager. So to set up those regular meetings where the employee knows that they can uh, connect with their manager, have those check-ins to make sure things are going well. And that's especially critical in this orientation period, typically the first 90 days of employment that the manager is meeting with and talking with the employee on a regular basis so that if there are struggles, if there are questions, um, that they can be addressed early in the employee's tenure. You've made a big investment to get this employee on board. So uh, this is the next part of that investment. And then lastly, as part of the orientation to establish connections with other employees and other departments. Um, we used to be able to rely more heavily on water cooler chats or being able to have lunch with people. If you've got a uh, remote workforce or people spread out over multiple locations, then you'll want to be more proactive and structured in setting up those meetings, setting up a time for a coffee, to, for a cut, an employee to have a cup of coffee virtually uh, with an employee in another part of the company. Recognition is also an important HR program. Um, celebrate your employees who embody your company values. Um, at KMA, we have an app within our SharePoint site where we can uh, recognize our coworkers um, in areas of our values. And that gets shared on SharePoint. It gets sent to our manager and it also uh, links directly to Paylocity, our HR program. Um, there are also opportunities for managers to provide recognition, peer recognition, and of course, company meetings. And there are a lot of apps and software that support recognition programs. So explore what you might have available in your HR system uh, to leverage uh, that kind of recognition. Uh, performance feedback is another um, area where you can help employees connect to the uh, purpose of the company and the values, and specifically looking at values. When we think about those behaviors, it's important to have them uh, be very well defined. So when we're talking about customer service, um, to be able to give examples of what um, good customer service looks like in your company, for example. And that way, employees will be able to look at that language and assess how well they're doing against it. And equally as important, it gives managers language to be able to discuss those behaviors with their employees through informal feedback sessions, as well as through the formal uh, performance review process. And then compensation is also a great way to make that connection. Uh, to, to think about ways to um, align co uh, compensation with your values, to reward um, goal achievement. So those are all elements to be thinking about as you design your um, HR, your compensation program. The next area that I wanna talk about um, is company goals. So we know that employees um, have a clear idea now of what our company purpose is, what behaviors are important uh, to the company. So let's connect them to the goals. Employees wanna know how their work, oops, oops there we go, sorry. <laughs> Got a little uh, excited there. Whoops, let me go back one more. Sorry about that. 
Um, as you'll recall, to support engagement, employees want to know how does their work contribute to the purpose of the company and what others in the company are working on. In the absence of a connection to the goals of a company, individuals will focus more on themselves versus the team. And when this happens, decisions will be made through the filter of what's best for them personally, and the culture can become more political. Ideally, a company will have overall goals that cascade down to the different departments and employees within those departments so that everybody understands the big picture and what role they play in achieving company goals. I've seen a lot of companies that invest the time and effort to create goals, but then they don't follow through with the communication. Either managers uh, tend to keep those goals closely held amongst the top manager and managers, and they may discuss them amongst themselves, but it doesn't get cascaded down into the organization. Or there may be a kickoff meeting in January to announce the goals, but then employees may not hear about how they're doing until November. And at that point, it's often too late to have an impact. So when we think about um, setting company goals, it's equally as important to think about how those get communicated. So once those goals have been set, have a kickoff meeting. Um, and that can be an all company meeting. Um, if, you're, if it's still possible to meet in person, um, you know, that's a, a great way to do it. Uh, certainly Teams and Zoom have allowed us um, a great opportunity to reach all of the employees in our organization at once. Um, you can do all company meetings, but sometimes it might be easier to uh, roll out those company goals in department meetings so that you've got a smaller group that could invite more Q&A. As I mentioned before, the follow-up is critical. So doing updates at least on a quarterly basis is important, maybe more often just depending on the nature of your company and, and the work that you do. It's also critical to address changes in company direction or priority um, in a timely fashion. Companies all had to pivot last year as a result of COVID. And, um, and so it's critical that people know that the company is uh, reprioritizing work, maybe shifting in a, in a different direction. We know uh, many restaurants had to pivot to takeout only. So that's a big change in business model. Uh, so keep the employees informed about what direction you're going, why that decision was made, and what the impact is on them. Uh, so while we've uh, introduced those goals and we're providing updates, it's also important to have visual reminders of those goals throughout your company. Um, so to have a dashboard that talks about the goals and the metrics and how you're doing against those. Um, your intranet uh, is a great way uh, to share that, those dashboards. Having posters or using uh, community computer monitors that rotate different messages through will be a good way to highlight those dashboards as well. And I'm a big fan of the traffic light um, dashboard methodology where if a goal is going well, um, it, you have the green light. If, if it's yellow, it means that there's some concern and, and people need to be looking at what's going on. Um, and if, if the goal is red, it means we need to really focus on uh, what's happening and, and what do we need to do to redirect to be able to meet that goal. Um, <clears throat> so if the company does have department goals, then of course your department managers are gonna wanna share those through their department meetings and huddles have their own departmental dashboards that are shared. And this is also a great opportunity to use technology to enhance communication. Um, Teams and Slack both offer uh, the chance to set up channels. And so you can have a channel devoted to your departmental goals and uh, you know, be able to have your dashboard there to be able to have information about the metrics to have project plans and to have different conversation threads about that goal all in one place. Um, as we think about communications, being able to streamline and keep things uh, focused on content areas is really important. 
we know we all get bombarded with emails. And, uh, you know, so to know that, yeah, maybe I got a message from my manager about something related to that departmental goal, but I can't find it in my email. So using technology like these channels can help keep things in one place and make it uh, more efficient to find that relevant information. And then lastly, uh, we have the individual goals. And this is a great way for an employee and manager to connect, to talk about what the employee needs to do to support the department goals, as well as the company goals. Those uh, conversations can get built into your informal feedback sessions, as well as the performance review process. So I want to um, come back to our most important communication tool, and that is your manager. Um, as we talked about earlier, Gallup showed that over 50% of employees who left companies felt that their manager or company could have done something to prevent them from leaving. Um, so managers are a key internal communicator and the importance of these uh, regular check-ins can't be underestimated especially as we continue to navigate through the pandemic and all the stress and ambiguity that it creates. Um, employees have a lot of fear and uh, a lot, many times that fear is unfounded. They may not be getting the right information uh, about what's going on in the company. They may be nervous about whether the, the health of the company um, so these one-on-ones are an opportunity to really engage in that conversation. Now, the frequency of these meetings will depend on the type of work that the uh, employee is doing, how long they've been with the company, and how long they've been on the job. But once you set a schedule, it's important to stick with it. Managers, uh, these meetings are important to employees, and it can be demoralizing if a manager reschedules uh, or pushes the meeting off on a recurring basis. It sends the message that the employee is not as important as all the other things that a manager has going on. And it's also important not to push off those one-on-ones -on -one with employees who've been with the company a long time um, or who perform well in their job and you may feel like they don't need much guidance and support. Uh, but continuing the relationship, continuing that foundation of communication and trust is equally as important with those employees so that if there are frustrations bubbling up, you can uh, talk, with those, talk with them in a timely fashion and uh, potentially address those in a timely fashion as well. So what should you focus on in these check-ins? Asking the employee how they're feeling how did their week go? What are they focusing on this week? Where do they need help and resources? And to talk about career growth and development. These check-ins provide the opportunity to address the stressors, anxiety, and fear in a timely manner. As we were talking about, there's so much stress. There's so many new challenges that our employees are facing in, in this time of COVID. And you know, if you can uh, learn that an employee, maybe their daycare schedule has shifted and, and they uh, need to be in, in work at nine instead of eight, if you have the flexibility to support them in making that shift, it's going to be a win for the employee as well as for you. Um, and also to lean into their fears. What are they nervous about? A lot of times, if you can talk through what those fears are, give them the facts of what's going on in the company, it can alleviate that fear and allow them to focus on doing their work. It's also an opportunity to reprioritize re work. So if uh, your company has had to make a shift in what your priorities are and what you want your work employees working on, that can get uh, uh, communicated and making sure that the employee's on track. Similarly, I think we all have worked with employees where all the fun stuff stays up at the top of their to-do list and the stuff that they don't like doing as much falls to the bottom. So these check-ins allow you to make sure that they're still working on the things that aren't as interesting and fun, but need to get done. It's a great way to monitor progress toward longer-term job goals, as well as 
um, engage the employee in, in their own career development and growth. Talk with them about what experiences they wanna have, what skills they wanna be developing. Some companies may have career paths in place where an employee will know what they need to do to get to the next level. Uh, smaller companies tend not to have that. So you have to get a little bit more creative to say, how can I give my employees some different opportunities? Uh, maybe work on cross-functional teams, maybe take on a special project, but look at ways to support that development and growth. And if you've created trust and open communication, which is really the bottom line of these one-on-one -on -one communications, um, it's also gonna give you the opportunity to know maybe that employee has topped out, maybe they've gone as far as they're gonna be able to go in our organization, and that may be okay. Then you can begin focusing on succession planning, knowing that at some point that employee is gonna leave. How do we backfill? How do we start to create a pipeline uh, for somebody to, uh, to fill that role? Okay. And then uh, the last piece I wanna to touch on before we go into developing our strategy is what are the other ways that we can get feedback from our employees? We've talked about the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, employers can also do pulse surveys. There are some great um, software tools that allow you to push out a quick question to say, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, and to keep it as simple as uh, an employee responding with an, an emoji. So if, if your department has tended to have uh, happy face emojis and then all of a sudden it shifts to angry or frustrated emojis, you know something's going on and, and you need to get in there and figure it out. Um, <clears throat> employee surveys are also uh, becoming uh, an important tool. They've always been an important tool, but we are uh, seeing more employees engaging us to do employee surveys. And that allows those surveys to be conducted by an objective third party, uh, ensuring anonymity uh, so that employees can uh, be candid with their feedback to the employer about what they're doing well, where they need to be approved, and what might be frustrating to them. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on is stay interviews. Many companies do exit interviews, and while those are valuable, they provide important information about why employees are leaving, um, it's too late to do anything about it to save that employee. They're already, the foot's out the door. So um, what more and more employers are doing are stay interviews, and it's really focusing on you know, uh, how the employees are feeling, are they satisfied in their work, what are the frustrations and how can we address them? And uh, what are their career goals? What do they want their future to look like? So it becomes a proactive way to get that feedback from your employee uh, before they leave. So before we go to the next session, any questions at this point, Tommy? Donna, sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, we do have one question and it goes back to earlier in the presentation. Uh, it, was, it was speaking more to do with um, an app that you mentioned and I, I wanna call that up. It was uh, an app that you mentioned about SharePoint. Um, oh, <laughs> actually we uh, were very lucky to have an IT person um, on our staff at KMA. And um, he developed an app that works with uh, SharePoint uh, to provide that recognition. Excellent, thank you. But I, I have to believe, <laughs> and I'm not a, a tech guru, but there are so many um, apps, you know, within uh, Microsoft and SharePoint and Teams that there may be one out there. Um, and if anybody has any ideas, I'd love to hear about it, but. Uh, we're very lucky at KMA, KMA to have our own IT person that developed that. And I'm, and I'm getting some comments from, I think, Jenny Ellis, as well as our own uh, staff here at the chamber, that uh, uh, the SharePoint app is very customizable. It's, um, it's something that, that many organizations can use to customize. Also, Microsoft has an internal recognition app as well. So if you have yep. questions about that, we can follow up after the uh, presentation, follow up with the chamber or KMA. Terrific. All right. And well, if there are any other questions, let me keep going and uh, make sure we can get through all of our content here. 
Um, so as we're thinking about developing um, communi communication strategy, um, you know, there's a lot that we talked about, um, but at one level, it seems like it should be common sense. It should be pretty straightforward to talk about why our company does great things and our great products. But at the end of the day, communication tends to get um, left behind. So you really need to devote time and energy to developing that strategy. And here are some of the things to think about. Ultimately, you're trying to create trust and transparency. And what that means is that you're providing access to leaders, you're providing opportunities for employees to ask questions, opportunities to provide feedback. Um, the important element here though, is that leaders need to follow through. So if you open that door for employees to engage and ask questions, you need to be able to close the loop with them, answer their questions, um, if they've provided feedback on something they think the company should do and, and you can't do it, close the loop and let them know why. It's more important, if, if a leader is not um, able to follow through on these items, it's better not to ask. So when you open that door, be prepared to respond. The next thing is establishing a communications cadence. And that's critical because employees need to know when they can expect to hear all company communications, to know when their departmental meetings and communications are going to happen, and when they can expect to meet with their managers. It actually creates a lot of efficiency when employees know what to expect and the company follows through in this area. Also think about your employee demographics and where employees are located. Um, so. I don't have a one size fits all answer for internal communications because it really is going to depend on who your employees are, what their work is, and where they're located. But think about um, you know, the age span in your uh, employee population. If you've got a very young workforce, chances are they're more adept at using technology and rely on using technology to communicate and do their work. Um, than, than boomers. Um, think about the ethnicity, the ethnic makeup of your company and the languages that are spoken. Do you need to be translating your, com your communication into other languages? Think about special needs, uh, employees who are visually impaired or um, hearing impaired. How are you ensuring that they're getting your messages as well? And then looking at the locations, uh, you know, if employees are spread out over multiple locations and time zones, you may want to rely on more recorded messages. Um, certainly, Zoom and Teams have been great uh, tools that companies are adding to their toolkit to facilitate communications. But if your employees are out in the field, it may be just as easy to do a 15-minute huddle at the start of the day to make sure people are on the same page. So really think about where your employees are and um, how to make that connection. And then lastly, you know, we are using technology more often. It's important to um, provide these tools, but then to make sure that your employees know how to use them. Um, so again, depending on the technical uh, adeptness of your workforce, some employees may get it and, and be off to the races. Others may struggling just to get their video to work on Teams, uh, let alone start working in channels and posting information and using the apps. So make sure that you're supporting employees in using the technology that you're expecting them to use around the communication. So what gets in the way? Um, leaders are overwhelmed with all that's on their plate and they're often being asked to do more with less. Leaders may feel like there's not enough time for uh, meetings and that it takes away from productivity. They may feel like they have to manage and control all of the communications. Leaders may lack confidence in their communication skills, and they may think that employees, um, you know, if they've told employees something once, that the employees should remember it and get it. But what can a company do? Uh, so as I mentioned, we've got all those factors around the internal communication strategy to be thinking about, but take some time to assess your communications in the highlighted areas of these presentation. 
where are we doing a good job? Where are we not doing anything at all? And where can we improve? Commit to that regular cadence of company communications. And that's going to take the commitment from the top that if we say we're doing quarterly all company meetings, that those um, get followed through on. Um, pri prioritize meetings that encourage communication and keeping everyone informed. Uh, coming back to that point where so often managers feel like meetings um, are, are a waste of time or, or impact productivity. But all we have to do is think about the time when you're working in a company and things aren't communicated well and how much time and energy employees um, spend trying to chase down answers, maybe not getting the right information because they're relying on gossip and rumor. Um, and then the flip side of that is that, you know, if an employee doesn't have a regular department meeting or an employee one-on-one uh, -on -one employee meeting, they may be peppering a manager with questions where if they know that they've got that meeting set up, they can save those questions for that meeting unless it's, you know, something that's truly of an urgent nature. So really meetings um, actually foster productivity and they don't need to be hour long meetings. They can be a 15 minute huddle. They can be um, a one on one every other week or even once a month. Um, but prioritize those and make sure that people stay informed. Use multiple tools to engage and reinforce key messages. Make sure those uh, messages are relevant and specific to the audience. So really uh, think about who you're communicating with, if it's managers or frontline employees, and, and make sure that the information you're um, sharing is relevant to them and in a language um, that's easily understood by your audience. And use streamlined and shorter and focused updates versus lengthy text-heavy content. Employees really aren't going to engage with um, you know, a 10-paragraph email from the C CEO about how things are, are going. Um, use uh, shorter updates, use uh, visual headings and colors and graphics to really make your messages pop so that employees can uh, focus in on those key messages. Uh, they can also, uh, companies can provide managers with talking points to communicate to their department. Again, I think one of the biggest challenges as a company grows is that CEOs uh, need to let go of controlling all of those communications and or feeling like they need to do it themselves. Providing your managers with those talking points to feel confident that messages are going to be conveyed consistently down through the uh, organization is one way to um, to trust that that communication is gonna happen. And ask your employees to share their ideas on how to improve. What should we stop? What, what should we continue doing? What should we stop doing? And what should we start doing? Listen to the employees and convey their concerns and frustrations to leadership. And if you have access, work with a marketing and communications resource to evaluate the impact of your internal communications. See if there's a way to, to look at your uh, open rate uh, from your CEO's messages. Are people um, reading them? Are they spending time with them? So great uh, marketing and communications people can help you evaluate the impact. And then lastly, what can a leader do? It's reminding managers of the importance of timely communications. Um, one of the phrases that we used at Martins Point Healthcare when I worked there was, who else needs to know? So whenever we would make a decision, uh, we would think about who does this impact and how do we need to communicate that to them and who needs to communicate that to them. Work with leaders to set the expectation that being a good communicator is a key part of a manager's job and then provide training programs to improve writing and communication skills. Help managers have the, how are you feeling conversation to get at issues early. Managers often are much more comfortable talking about numbers and metrics, but it's a, it's a different thing to be able to lean into a conversation to really talk with an employee about what they're afraid of and to be able to, um, to work with them through that fear and get them to the other side of that. And then lastly, and this is a plug for HR, 
Make sure that your HR tools and systems connect the employees to the mission, vision, and values of the company and support the company goals. And that truly does need um, you know, leadership support to be effective. So those are my tips. Um, what questions do people have? Well, Jonna, we've had some great questions come through. And again, thank you for the presentation. We'll try to get these, uh, there's a few in rapid fire succession so we can be somewhat <laughs> timely uh, before the nine o'clock hour. But uh, the first question that came in uh, from Kristen was, what are your suggestions for improving cross-department communication? Um, Cross-department communications, um, really that's an opportunity um, to do, uh, you can do uh, cross-department meetings. Um, you know, there's an opportunity to bring departments together to, to share the work that they're doing um, using uh, avenues like uh, teams and channels within teams may bring departments together. I think, you know, ultimately you wanna ask, what am I trying to get from that cross-department communication? Um, am I trying to just connect the employees? Do I wanna build relationship or are there specific project um, areas that we wanna focus on? And, um, you know, build your communication strategy around what you're trying to get from that. Excellent. Uh, we have another question that follows up on that nicely. Uh, how can employers ensure that their employees are actually reading and engaging with internal communications in an, incre in an increasing virtual world? Is less actually more? Mm. Um, you know, again, I always hate to say it keeps, de it depends, but, um, you know, I, I think as we look at how people receive information today, um, short and sweet is best. Um, and you know, one of the examples that I loved reading about as I was preparing for this is um, under, learning that Salesforce, uh, the company that does the CRM software, they actually have a weekly email. So they're still using email, but they have really uh, designed it in a way that it um, you know, highlights key messages, short and sweet, and that they're you know, understanding that employees are staying engaged with that. But I think, you know, again, the more focused the communication is using the channel where the employee is most likely to find that information is critical. And making it fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we have one or two more questions here. Let me just get to them. Uh, the last question I have here was, do you have any suggested strategies for employers whose employees are not on email regularly? We have a behavioral health organization and so many roles are client facing in schools and in residences, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that, um, that is a big challenge. Um, and so actually I don't have a great answer for that. I haven't worked with as many companies that have that kind of remote, purely remote workforce. Um, you know, I would say if there are opportunities to bring people together, um, you know, for a company meeting, um, so they may not be on email regularly, but you can still bring uh, people together for a departmental meeting and bring them in via Zoom or Teams. Um, so they, they may not need those more frequent touch points, but, you know, figure out the way that you can bring the people together using uh, Regular mail may still be an option, although we can't always rely on the mail these days either. But for some key messages that you want to make sure they actually see, um, you know, that's that's an option as well. Awesome. And again, I want to remind people if they have other questions, they can certainly send them through to Jonna. I think you can see her um, her email is up on screen right now, or you can send them through to the chamber. Um, but just a quick reminder that today's presentation has been recorded. It will be available for replay on the Chamber's website and YouTube page. Uh, give that about a day or so until we can get this trimmed up and put up there for, uh, for replay. Um, a copy of today's presentation, the slide deck, some additional details and resources will also be included in the post-event email you'll be receiving either later today or tomorrow. Uh, just a quick plug for all of our upcoming Chamber events. Be sure to check the Chamber website calendar for all of our great events. Even better, when you're there, sign up for our weekly newsletter. Thank you again to everyone for another great episode of Eaton Peabody's Growth Basics for Business and to each of you for attending today and throughout the entire year. Another shout out to our sponsors from Eaton Peabody, 
and Anania Bailey for their commitment to this series. We look forward to seeing you at our ne next Growth Basics on Tuesday, February 11th. Have a wonderful day, stay warm, and enjoy the rest of your week. John, if you can hang tight for a second. Yep. Just looking through the chat, making sure there's no other questions that came through that we we'll want to put in the in the uh, email. Okay. A lot of, yeah, I want to keep that. A lot of thank yous. Good to see you, John. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm just scrolling through those now because, of course, I couldn't see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you did a great job of getting a lot of content in there in, in under an hour. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I hope people found it helpful. I I hate that I didn't have a better answer for the uh, you know, the person who's staff is all out in client facing jobs, but, um, there it is. <laughs> yep. No. And, and I could introduce you to, I know, I know Kristen. Well, Kristen, Kristen Farnham from Spurlink asked that question. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, and I, I understand the unique situation of the question. Um, it probably just takes a little bit of brainstorming, but, um, yeah, if you, if, if she needs further resources, I can put her in touch. Yeah, with I know. And I mean, so much of it does come back to even just talking with your employees about how do I, what's the best way to get to you? Um, 